Hello, this is S.K. Williams, and today is not Good Friday, but I missed Good Friday due to illness, so I release it now, although I do, in a way, find it both appropriate and tragic, if that is the correct word, if exaggerated. This week is a local festival where I live, and it would have been great if I had celebrated Good Friday last week in this festival could be combined with a celebration of Easter week. But as it is, I'm releasing this video for Good Friday a week late. For those who think that Good Friday was actually two months ago, I'm referring to Good Friday on the Orthodox calendar, the one used by the East and by a few other groups. Good Friday, of course, commemorates the day that the Lord Jesus Christ died upon the cross for the remission of our sins and descended to hell for three days. The sacrifice of Jesus, which is central to Christianity, is all about getting us to subvert ourselves. For, you see, we refuse to accept our own wickedness, our own evils, our own sins. Instead, we blame others. And by placing Jesus on the cross, we can blame him. We can look to him. We can hate him. We can despise him. We can spit upon him. And all of those things did happen. He was arrested. He was placed in captivity, he was flogged, he had a crown of thorns placed upon his head. He was mocked and jeered at, stripped naked, paraded through the streets, and elevated on a cross, nailed to a cross, in a way that would have sent pain through the nerves and the body in agony, lifted upon that cross to be ridiculed, held aloft above a crowd, jeering him, mocking him, ridiculing him. So he dies a slow, agonizing, humiliating death of a criminal. One we gave him, one that we look to, because look how guilty he is, look how awful he is. All of it is his fault. And yet the death of Jesus subverts all of that. For you see, we know he is an innocent man. We cannot point to his sins and say, he, is, he deserves this because he did this evil. And we know that, though we pretend otherwise, some even try and assign to Jesus evils or sins. But the purpose of Jesus on the cross is to look at, at him, not ourselves. To look at him and realize he is innocent and that we are doing this. The divine prophet Richard Dawkins, most holy of the holy religion of atheism, did write in his sacred scripture, If God wanted to forgive us, why not just forgive us? Why does he need to kill Jesus? And this dogma of the holy religion of atheism has been repeated ever since. It ignores the point. Jesus did not die upon the cross to make God able to forgive us. He died on the cross to make us able to receive God's forgiveness. For we are so caught up in ourselves that we do not look past ourselves, but holding Jesus aloft in what should have been humiliation and shame, something that allows us to continue in our blindness for we blame him, breaks that chain. We see Jesus on a cross. We see an innocent man dying. And it forces us to look past ourselves, onto him, onto he who knew no sin, but who became sin for us. Knowing that we are responsible for this, and looking finally past ourselves. And thus, being able to honestly look at ourselves and our own sins, our own weakness, our own hatreds, our own pride. And Jesus did not simply die. He also went to hell. A place reserved for the sinners of the world. A place of the damned. And there Jesus went. 
Jesus in the hell. Jesus suffering the fate of the damned. While it is true he came back after three days alive, he still went to hell. And he still went through the flogging and pain to get to hell. This was not as the divine prophet Max Dillahunty, most holy, who doth live in reality, even though he is now with a woman who is actually a man, said, This is not Jesus not really sacrificing himself, because the divine prophet Max Dillahunty, most holy of the holy religion of atheism, did say, Jesus did not truly sacrifice himself since he came back, and to sacrifice yourself means to give something up forever for something else. And he came back. It was just a bad weekend. The divine prophet Max Dillahunty, most holy and sacred are his words. Hallowed be the name of Max Dillahunty. Hallowed be the name of science. Hallowed be the name of reason. Hallowed be the name of no god. Lied. For one thing, a sacrifice is not necessarily giving something up forever. It could simply be to give something up on behalf of something else. But the definition of the word sacrifice he is using came from the 1500s. You can check this on Etym Online or a few other etymological sources. The word sacrifice actually originally referred to an act that makes sacred. And while the Greek and Hebrew terms, like holocausto, meant burnt offering, even by the time that the New Testament was written, the term had come to not simply mean something that was burned, but was rather used euphemistically as much as literally. While they did offer animals as burnt offerings, they would also sometimes offer money. And by offering money, they didn't simply pay for an animal to be burned. Sometimes the money would be simply given to the temple to buy other provisions without ever purchasing an animal to be burned. And yet they still called it a holocausto, they still called it a burnt offering, they still called it something that it doesn't sound like. And we do the same thing. If you're watching this on a video platform, you are going to think of it as a video. But originally, the term video was referred to specifically images and audio captured on a magnetic strip. And that is not how these things actually work online. I'm not, of course, trying to say you should not use the word video. But if you're going to be pedantic and say if it says burnt offering, it must be burnt offering, then you must not call this a video. There are plenty of things that have names that go back to antiquity but have changed over time. The sacrifice of Jesus, though, was understood in Greek in Hebrew, and especially in Latin, to not simply be to give something up. In fact, they had no concept of a sacrifice as being primarily about giving something up. For while it is true that if you give money or you uh, sacrifice an animal on an altar, they are gone, the primary focus of a sacrifice was an act that made holy, an act that made sacred. Sacrifice shares a similar roots to words like sanctify, sacred. And that is what this was. It was not an act of giving something up for something else, so much as it was an act that made sacred. For you see, Christ, while he was not burned, acted as the money I mentioned earlier. Scripture says Jesus was a ransom paid for many. You can look this up yourself if you wish. In Matthew chapter 20 verse 28 or Mark chapter 10 verse 45 or John verse 13 verses 1 through 17. Jesus was a ransom paid on our behalf. Just as one could give money to the temple in Jerusalem or even in a Greek temple, 
Jesus was given as a ransom. Paying a price. And that death where he was flogged and ridiculed and beaten and starved and had a crown of thorn thrust upon his head where he was paraded through a street carrying his own cross when stripped naked nailed to a cross in such a way as to cause great pain lifted above a crowd to be ridiculed and to die slowly and humiliatingly and painfully and then descending into hell this is not as the divine prophet Matt Tiller Hunting Most Holy said this is not just a bad weekend this is agony and it does not matter that Jesus returned to life it was still agony and again the goal is not to make God able to forgive us it is not that God was unable to forgive us until he killed Jesus or as the disgusting, bigoted sociopath atheists say, God murdered Jesus. It was about us killing Jesus, not about God killing Jesus. And it was not that God was unable to forgive us until Jesus died. It was rather we needed Jesus to die for us so that we could accept that forgiveness, so that Satan could accept something in return. For Satan had claimed our souls. The sacrifice of Jesus was not to make God able to forgive us. It was to free us from Satan by paying a ransom. The sacrifice of Jesus was not about making God able to forgive us. It was about making us able to look past ourselves onto someone else, onto the suffering of an innocent man upon a cross who died for us. And while he did resurrect, that shan't be discussed here, for this is my Good Friday video. Of Jesus, the Christ, who was the very Word of God incarnate, suffered for us so that we could look to Him. We could see Him elevated on a cross. And now we have the choice of continuing to see it as a mark of shame and humiliation and ridicule, so that we do not have to look at our own sins or to see an innocent man dying because we killed him, and to admit our guilt, and through that see ourselves through a proper lens, freeing ourselves of guilt by acknowledging the truth of it, walking out of that darkness into light, all because we see the light of Jesus upon a cross, or we see the fires of hell illuminating our souls, and the light of heaven illuminating our way out. I haven't much else to say, so I shall take my leave. Thank you, God bless, and goodbye.